So I think there's a lot of research going on in hemochromatosis at the moment. Um, I, I'd probably put it into two main areas. So one's better understanding the disease and one is around treatment and management. So in terms of better understanding the disease, um, a lot of people have traditionally looked at so how the liver and the joints are affected, so organs that manifest symptoms in the condition. So there's a lot of work going on now of the impact of hemochromatosis on other organs in the body and how they might also be affected. There's also a fair bit of work going on around what we call modifiers of hemochromatosis. So one thing about uh, this condition is that just because you have the genetic variants that cause it um, doesn't mean you'll necessarily develop it. So some people might not show iron overload at all, some might show iron overload without symptoms and some might get really severe disease even though they have the same genetic variants. So it's understanding what sort of factors cause this difference in expression of the condition. and They might be genetic factors or they might be lifestyle, they might be dietary that kind of thing. There's a lot of work in, in trying to explain that. In terms of the treatment and management, um, a fair bit of work is going on with respect to ways that we might be able to treat the condition um, using drug-based methods, so not blood removal. Um, this could be particularly important for patients that don't tolerate blood donation well, and particularly elderly, elderly people. Uh, so that's a really exciting area of research as well. And I think the other area of more management that's been really interesting is a study that's come out of Melbourne um, recently that has looked at the effect of blood removal or, or blood donation in people that have just moderately elevated iron levels. So traditionally, to get a referral to have blood removed, you need a, a fairly high or highly elevated uh, iron levels on your pathology test. But what they managed to show down there is that even with moderately elevated iron levels, the people that had um, blood donated showed uh, fairly substantial improvements in their self-reported quality of life. So this really speaks to the importance of allowing you know, whole, well, blood donation more generally, but the fact that you don't need to be at really dangerous levels of iron overload to have this sort of treatment. You might benefit from it even if your um, levels are only marginally elevated. They're the main areas at the moment in addition to just general research into iron biology and, and how it works. I think we're at the point now where we can say we do have, the, um, don't have everything under control and all the information we need to actually manage this condition at a population level. Sure, we're going to be able to learn more, we're going to be able to optimise treatment, we're going to learn more about the potential effects if you leave it unchecked. But essentially, we know enough already. We can detect the condition very easily. We have a pipeline for treating the condition in people that have it. What we really need now is awareness more than anything. So I think that's the one missing factor. Over the last 30 years, we've, we've put together all the information we need to ensure that this condition doesn't impact the lives of anyone provided that they're detected appropriately and managed appropriately. So the missing piece of the puzzle now is really about raising awareness, um, ensuring that people are picked up early, and whether this is through a screening program or something else will depend, but I think there should be real motivation for screening people from this condition, making sure that their attitudes towards screening or detection are positive and they're not concerned about things like insurance implications, and then also ensuring that um, treatment options are in place and readily accessible to anyone who is diagnosed with the condition. And that might mean uh, making blood removal more easily accessible in regional and rural areas and that kind of thing. So look, I'm optimistic. I think the research is done. Um, what really needs to happen now is some awareness systems put in place for helping people get detected early and also be treated in a timely way that's not too much of a burden um, on their day-to-day -day lives.